Hello and welcome to this video about point dipoles or ideal dipoles. A dipole is a pair of two charged particles that have opposite charges of the same magnitude and are separated by a small distance. The dipole moment of this dipole is equal to this charge multiplied by this separation between the two charges. It is a vector that points from the positive towards the negative charged particle. It is a point dipole when this sort of dipole is located at a point with a non-zero and finite dipole moment. This would mean that the two charges would be infinitesimally close, while the charges would grow near infinitely large. In this video, we will derive the formula for the electric field surrounding a point dipole like this. This is how a point dipole would be represented, as a tiny arrow in the middle of a large circle, representing its direction, and the angle with respect to it would be defined as so, always being zero behind the arrow, and going anti-clockwise around the circle. Here are some variables associated with the point dipole. R is the distance of the observer from it, and epsilon is set to be the separation distance between the two charges, which will tend to zero. I decided to change its name from x to epsilon because it is going to be an infinitesimally small number. Q is the electric charge on each particle. P is the dipole moment and theta is the angular position of the observer from the dipole. So we'll let the distance between the charges tend to zero and become infinitesimally small. The dipole moment is equal to the product of this distance and the charge on the positive particle in the dipole. This dipole moment is held constant. This is what the charge is equal to and will tend to infinity as the distance tends to zero. But this won't be a problem, because the two charges are so close to each other that they'll cancel out any infinite electric field. Now to look at the geometry of a dipole. And this one is far from being a point dipole, but it is good for observing its geometry and using it to calculate the electric field. Now to greatly magnify this dipole and its surrounding region so as to be able to calculate some of the distances associated with it. We now have to calculate the distances of each charge to the observer point A. We'll start with the distance D+. Plus. So from the diagram we can see that this is what D plus squared is equal to using Pythagoras' rule. Then we have to expand the squared expression in brackets. Then we can gather these terms together using trigonometric rules. And because epsilon tends to zero, we can eliminate any term that contains epsilon squared or any higher power of epsilon. This really helps to simplify the math. Square rooting this expression gives us this for d+. Plus and d minus can be found using a similar method. And here is a quick look at the circular unit vectors. Notice that they change as we move around the circle. These are the unit vectors that we'll be using to calculate the electric field. Now to get the lengths x plus and x minus, which are the components of these distances in the r direction, or direction away from the center. We'll get this value for x plus squared using Pythagoras' theorem, and we'll substitute this expression in for d plus. We can eliminate this term immediately, because it contains an epsilon to the power of 2 or higher. Notice that x plus is equal to d plus. This will make our calculations a lot easier and x minus may be calculated in a similar way, and x minus is equal to d minus as well. 
So now that we have these distances d plus and d minus, we can start to find the electric field from each particle. This is the formula for a single monopole charge that we'll use for each of these two charges. And we get this after substituting the value for d plus into it. And we'll get this result for e minus using a similar method. We now have to get the portion or component of the electric field in the r direction away from the center. So this will be the electric field multiplied by x plus over d plus. And we can see when we substitute these values in that x plus and d plus are equal. The component of E in the R direction is equal to the total E caused by the positive charge. And the R component of E minus can be found in a similar way. So now to add these two components together so as to get the total component in the R direction. Notice that they can be added like real numbers because they are in the same direction. Then we substitute the numbers in and there's just a slight difference between them to stop this expression from being zero. Then we factorize this expression. Then we add these fractions using fraction adding methods. Notice that the denominator is now a difference between squares. The epsilon square term can then be eliminated, thus greatly simplifying this expression. So this is the R component of the electric field induced by the point dipole. Now to find the component of E in the direction of the angle or going anticlockwise around the circle. This component will be at right angles to the R component, which is necessary so that they can be divided up and added back together. This will be equal to the electric field multiplied by this ratio, which will be equal to this ratio, which will be equal to this. Another similar calculation will yield this result for the negative charge. So now the total angular component will be found by adding these two together. Notice that they are added because the geometry shows that they have the same direction and that they are both pointing in the same direction. Now to use fraction addition rules to give us this result. And because the larger terms R are added together in this fraction, they force the term containing epsilon to be much smaller compared to it. And so these epsilon terms can be discarded, just like the epsilon squared terms. Adding the two R terms gives us this. And so this is the total electric field component in the direction around the circle. Gathering these two results together gives us this final result in the green square. I've written the angular unit vector as a small O hat. I've drawn a diagram of how the electric field looks at all points on a circle. If the dipole is in the center and pointing to the left. Notice how the electric field vector spins around as we travel around the circle. And its magnitude isn't always the same, being larger on the horizontal axis and smaller on the vertical axis. From the equation it can be seen to be twice as large on the horizontal axis as on the vertical axis. And now to get this equation in rectangular coordinates using i and j unit vectors. This is what the r vector looks like in terms of the i and j vectors. And this is what the o or angular unit vector looks like. We'll just ignore the kp over r cubed term for the moment. And this is the equation that we found to describe the electric field using r and o unit vectors. Substituting these vectors into the equation gives us this expression. Expanding this expression gives us this. And then we factorize them 
in terms of the new unit vectors. Then we use trig identities to simplify this expression. Then we simplify it a bit more. So then we eventually get this. I decided to use decimal notation because it looks neater in this case. It uses two theta in the equations instead of theta. And so these are the expressions for the x and y coordinates of this electric field. It can be seen that the field spins twice as fast around these vectors as around the r, o vectors because of the use of the angle 2 theta. This is an important result because we can use this to find the electric dipole distribution in a superconductor in the presence of a magnetic field that I'll do later. For completeness, I'll just write out the proper formulas that include the Kp over R cubed term. Notice that these electric fields depend on the inverse cube of distance meaning that their effect attenuates faster than for a monopole. Now for an example problem. We have to find the electric field at point A given all of this information here. For the first part we have to find the electric field in terms of circular coordinates. So we'll use this equation here. And then we'll substitute all of the values into it. Then we simplify it a bit more. So then we get this answer for the electric field in circular coordinates. Now to get the same electric field in rectangular coordinates. We'll use this equation this time. Substituting these values in gives us this long expression, which simplifies to be this, and then to this. Finally, after much simplification, we get this answer. So thank you for watching, and I hope that you've enjoyed this video and have learnt a lot from it, and I wish you good luck in all your quests to use it.